In the art of war, Sun Tzu advises military leaders to seize the high ground. The reasoning behind this strategic recommendation is pretty obvious. The high ground provides a clear view of the surrounding landscape. And have you ever tried to fight while walking uphill? It's exhausting. War has changed a lot in the last 2000 years, but seizing the high ground remains as important as ever. For military strategists today, the highest ground isn't really ground at all. It's in orbit. As we enter into the era of the newly created United States Space Force, is it a matter of time before the US military is outfitting spacecraft with weapons of war? And what will war in space look like? Space has always represented a prime military advantage. Every space history nut knows that Cold War era paranoia basically fueled the original space race. In 1957, when the Soviet Union successfully launched the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, it caused widespread fear across the United States. An anxious nation worried that the United States had fallen behind a more technologically advanced Soviet Union. In the early 50s, the US was the dominant world power. A future in which the Soviets achieved superior military capability in outer space was considered a direct threat to US national security. This anxiety fueled the creation of NASA and a ton of defense and education initiatives. Years later, when the US launched the space shuttle, the Soviets believed it was designed to drop a bomb over Russia and return in one orbit. Obviously, the space shuttle never dropped the bomb and the Soviet Union collapsed before it could ever achieve military superiority. Thankfully, to this day, there hasn't been any overt acts of war in space. This is because all that Cold War paranoia inspired world leaders to enter into some very collaborative agreements. At the tail end of the Cold War, several world powers came together to form the Outer Space Treaty of 1967. This treaty outlined the spirit of cooperation between the nations and included an agreement to never develop nuclear or similarly destructive space weapons. But the world of the 1960s was a very different one than the one we live on today. Back then, the threat of nuclear weapons being launched from orbit was one of the scariest ways for conflict to reach the everyday lives of civilians. During this period, the atomic age, nuclear power was seen as innovative technology with endless possibilities, both good and very, very bad. But the weapons available today have the potential to be as destructive as nuclear warheads, or worse. In 2019, then-President Trump signed the National Defense Authorization Act. And for the first time in over 70 years, a new branch of the armed services was created, the United States Space Force. It was created to pursue United States superiority in the space domain. And so far, it's the only independent space force in the world. Space warfare may still only be hypothetical, but it's also extremely plausible and well-researched. There are several ways to wage war in and or around space. There are space to ground attacks, ground to space attacks, and of course, space to space. Space to ground weapons include things like kinetic bombardment. During the Korean War and the Vietnam War, the US dropped small steel projectiles from aircrafts, informally called lazy dog bombs. These weren't intended to explode, but were incredibly lethal because of the kinetic energy gained while falling from height. Lazy dog bombs generated an enormous amount of destructive kinetic energy, capable of penetrating nearly any material upon hitting the ground. Then, in the 1950s, Jerry Purnell, an operations researcher at Boeing, developed the concept of dropping tungsten rods from low Earth orbit. Most things dropped from the upper atmosphere might burn up on the way down, but large tungsten rods generate a devastating amount of kinetic energy. This destructive power has earned these tungsten rods the nickname Rods from God. Beyond just dropping stuff from high up, there are also directed energy weapons. 
These are ranged weapons that damage their targets with highly focused energy. The obvious ones are lasers, but also includes microwaves, particle beams, and even sound beams. But a particularly terrifying type of directed energy weapon is a hypervelocity railgun. A railgun uses powerful electromagnets to accelerate projectiles to high speeds. But there's a railgun variant currently under development at Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, better known as DARPA called the Magneto Hydrodynamic Explosive Munition, nicknamed Mayhem, that fires molten metal at an enemy. If it sounds like something out of science fiction, that's because it is. The US planned to construct a lunar military base back in the 50s. The Horizon Lunar Outpost was seen as a necessary strategic step to protect the United States' interests on the moon. It was intended to be a means of conducting surveillance on the Earth and space and serving as a base for exploration of the Moon. The permanent outpost was estimated to cost $6 billion, but it soon proved to be too expensive and the technical challenges were formidable. One of the tenets of the Outer Space Treaty of 67 ruled out establishing a purely military base in outer space. But any future military base in space is more likely to be established as dual-use proposals rather than explicit plans for a military base of operations. The United States isn't the only power considering setting up shop on the moon. The European Space Agency, Russia, and China all have similar plans for establishing a manned base on the moon for civilian use and with no stated military purpose. At least for now. Space travel has made advanced technologies part of our everyday life. Core amongst these are artificial satellites. Nuclear weapons and rods of God are terrifying, but anti-satellite weapons are designed to exploit our dependence on networks of satellites. Satellites synchronize cell phone networks and connect people across the globe. We depend on them to enable international commerce and control the timing of GPS navigational services. Being such an important element of our modern infrastructure also means that attacking or disabling an opposing nation's satellites could become a war objective. Which has of course led to the development of anti-satellite technology. Interfering or eliminating crucial satellites would create havoc, confusion, or worse among the general public. The basis of most anti-satellite technology systems are missiles, which, with some incredible calculations in science, can be used to take out individual satellites, like a sniper. In 2007, China proved they could do it by destroying a defunct weather satellite with a missile. In 2008, the United States took a stab at it and shot down a malfunctioning reconnaissance satellite with an anti-ballistic missile. In 2019, India successfully tested an anti-satellite missile shooting down a satellite in low Earth orbit. And not to be left out, in November 2021, Russia successfully shot down a satellite too with an anti-ballistic missile. The resulting debris from Russia's anti-ballistic missile firing threatened the safety of astronauts on board the International Space Station. Astronauts on the ISS were forced to take shelter in their escape capsules as the debris passed by. The space debris generated from blowing up a satellite could hit friendlies, unintended targets, or just render parts of Earth's orbit unusable or unsafe. The potential collateral damage has inspired other countries to explore alternative approaches. First off, there's satellite jamming. This can be accomplished by interfering with the uplink or downlink communications. Both the United States and Russia are thought to have jamming capabilities. The US deployed counter communication system more than 15 years ago, but its specific capabilities are still unknown. There's also the option of maneuvering smaller satellites to approach, sabotage, hijack, or even collide with target enemy satellites. And last but not least, there's lasers. I feel like there's always lasers involved. High-powered lasers can also be used to either damage or blind satellites. China has developed the capability to track satellites using ground-based lasers and is thought to have illuminated United States satellites on more than one occasion. President Eisenhower warned of the dangers of close links between defense contractors and the government in his farewell address in 1961. 
Since that warning, we've seen a rise in the military industrial complex in earnest, which isn't surprising when you consider the large sums of money on the table. In 2018, the world's military spent $1.8 trillion. The United States alone spent $650 billion. Space presents an even bigger payday. In 2019, the United States government spent in excess of $8 billion on space-related systems. And there's more money around the corner. To put this into perspective, the United States Space Force's budget for 2022 is $17.5 billion. In the next five years, companies like SpaceX, Northrop Grumman, Blue Origin, and United Launch Alliance are set to make hundreds of millions of dollars for launching national security payloads for the United States government. The U.S. Space Force will likely contract Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman as prime contractors in the continued development of the next-generation infrared satellites. These advanced satellites will aim to track potential ballistic missile attacks on the United States or its allies. The U.S. Air Force is considering using SpaceX's Starlink as a highly accurate and almost unjammable alternative to GPS. And the Pentagon is collaborating with SpaceX to develop cargo rockets capable of delivering cargo anywhere in the world in less than an hour. Whether it's the result of political lobbying or just the unwavering ambition of the military, the U.S. government has always been willing to spend big bucks on big guns. So it's not surprising that billionaires and private companies are willing to invest so much in the space industry. There's a lucrative future in building rockets and space technology. But if history is any guide, a lot of that profit will be made by making weapons or defense technology. Instead of worrying about an enemy dropping a nuke, we'll look up and wonder if the delicate infrastructure that we've come to depend on is safe or in danger of attack. Not sure if there's an in-school drill for that one yet. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel right now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any great content. And look out for Curiosity Stream on social media. Links are in the description.